What is up everybody? It is Eric from Amazon Lit. Please do not forget to smash that subscribe button. We are here bringing you another educational video on how to grow your Amazon business. Today's topic is hazmats and how to submit the proper documentation to get a product reclassified from a hazmat to a non-hazmat so you can ship that product to FBA centers, start selling more units, and line your pockets with money. Enjoy the video. Stay lit. So if you're just selling the regular day-to-day -day products and you've been passing on those hazmat products because you don't want to send them to a hazmat facility or you're not approved to send hazmat products but you know the product that you want to sell, Amazon is only considering a hazmat because they don't have the proper information about the product. But you know it's a skin cream or sometimes it's even the other day we had a tomato sauce that Amazon considered a hazmat. A tomato sauce, a product that you consume no way is that product considered a hazmat but the way Amazon operates is they rather classify a product as a hazmat so they don't have to deal with any ramifications from customer complaints or shipping complaints and have you submit the information so they can review it because they're not going to look for the information themselves. So this video is a step-by-step -step breakdown on how to access that information, where to find that information, the proper submittal of that information, and we're going to give you two different ways that you could submit this information so you could take a product that Amazon's considering a hazmat and get it reclassified to a non-hazmat so you could continue to grow your Amazon storefront and offer more products to your customers and grow your sales and grow your revenue and grow your profit margins. We sell probably close to $30,000 a month in hazmat products and there's a large opportunity to make good money on hazmat products a, because not everybody's selling them, and B, because a lot of the products that Amazon considers hazmat are just lacking the proper documentation. But the way Amazon operates is if they don't have the information, they're gonna change it to a hazmat because they want you to provide the information. They're not gonna get it for us. So, here's the video, step-by-step -step process. You're gonna love it, leave comments below. I wanna hear your feedback about this video. We're gonna be pumping out a lot of content in the next couple months. Also, we can help you grow your business. This is what we do for a living. We sell products on Amazon and we're pretty good at it. With over $100 million in Amazon sales, we know how to make it happen. So check the video out and enjoy. So first things first, you're gonna to go to Seller Central up to this text box at the top right corner of, of Amazon Seller Central. This is where all the information necessary to sell on Amazon can be found. And you're gonna to wanna to type in MSDS, which stands for Material Safety Data Sheet. So you're gonna click search, and you're gonna scroll down to this first option, which says Require Dangerous Goods, Hazmat Information and Documentation. You're gonna select that. And now you're going to want to scroll all the way to the bottom here. All the way as far as you can go down to under this last category where it says exemption sheet for products without harmful chemicals. So this is for products that are being classified as a hazmat when you know they're not a hazmat. And most of the products that are classified as hazmats are products that are used either on your skin or your face, sometimes even grocery products, sometimes toys can be considered hazmats, and you know they're not hazmats just because the use of them, they're for either human consumption or use on your body, so you know they're not considered hazmats. So the idea is to get that product removed from being a hazmat. So you're gonna keep scrolling all the way to the bottom, and you're gonna to go to option four here, upload an exemption sheet, and it gives you some directions on how to upload an exemption sheet and we're going to explain that thoroughly right now on exactly how to fill out this information and how to submit an MSDS to get a hazmat product removed from the hazmat category. So you go to select, select upload an exemption sheet 
and now it gives you some information I would encourage reading this information I'm not going to read it to you I'm just going to give you a gist of what it says basically says that safety data sheets are for chemical based products that might be regulated as dangerous goods um, and in the event that an SDS for your product doesn't contain any harmful chemicals, then it will be switched from an hazmat to a non-hazmat. Um, and there's two different exemption sheets. So those exemption sheets can be found on the right here. So we're going to select the one that's in English. And it has two different options here. Exemption sheet for battery and battery powered products. So if Amazon's considering your product a hazmat because it has a lithium ion battery um, or some sort of battery in it and you want to challenge that hazmat um, categor categorization, then you could submit an exemption sheet for a product that has a battery or battery powered product. Uh, but the one we're going to look at um, is the exemption sheet for products without harmful chemicals. So you want to click this. And now in the bottom right hand or left hand corner of your screen, an Excel file is going to populate. You're going to want to open that Excel file. It's actually opening on this other screen over here. So let me bring this on over. All right. So this is the file that Amazon provides for you when you download the exemption sheet and it asks for some information first it describes you know a product that is regulated as dangerous goods if any of its components are classified as dangerous goods or substances or are otherwise regulated by any official organization that governs safe transport storage or handling of goods um, this exemption sheet will be accepted only for products that do not contain possibly harmful chemicals or substances alcohol isopropanol acetone, hydroxide, sodium, acid. So if you see that your product that you're trying to get approval for contains some of these in substances, then there's a, a very high chance that Amazon is not going to approve it because they're going to see it in the ingredients list and they're not even going to consider it. So what I like to do is start filling out this information. It already populates here. It already populates the date for me. Today is the 16th of November. And then you want to put in your name. So I'm going to put in my first and last name. And then I want to keep scrolling to the right and it's going to ask some questions. So it says, does your product bear a warning or danger phrase? And then it has a drop down selection, either yes or no. So we're going to assume that all of these are no, explosive, no. Flammable, no. Just keep going down the list. Oxidizer, no. Gas under pressure, no. Corrosive, no. Toxic, no. Harmful or irritant, no. Health effects, no. Aquatic toxicity, long-term damage to the ecosystem, no. All right, so now we have the base of this template. And what I want to do, or what you want to do, is you want to save this as a template in a new folder. So we'll, let's create a new folder here. I will call this new folder, we'll call this new folder hazmats. And we'll go into this folder and we're going to save this file as hazmat template and I'm going to date it today's date just so I know sometimes Amazon makes changes to this template so I'm aware all right let's say they make a change in February of 2020 I'm aware that this hazmat template from November 16th of 2019 is no longer effective so I need to use the new one so and then I'm going to save this and now that file I no longer have to put my first and last name I no longer have to select no for these this file is saved with 25 percent of the information that needs to be submitted and is pretty standard across the board so now I, I'm saving myself time and time is money and it's super important to save yourself time 
So now you scroll over to the right here and ask for some additional information. So first thing it asks for is an ASIN. So I have a product here that Amazon considers a hazmat. So this is the product. Clear Sill Stubborn Acne Control 5-in-1. Uh, it's selling for $16.44. It's moving 410 units a month. Let's say I'm paying $250 for this product. That's $7.50 for the three-pack. Probably $16.74. Let's say you're even paying $9. Let's see if there's any money in there. $1.99. Not great. But if you could get this product for, like I said, $250 before, which would be $750 for the three-pack, you can make $349 on this product, which is which is reasonable. Take a look at Keepa. It's been pretty consistent. It looks like for the past three months, it's $16.74, so I know I'm not making less than $350. And even for the year, it was selling much higher and still ranked pretty well, $33,000, $16,000, $18,000. So it's still selling pretty well, and now it's selling the, it's ranked the lowest because it's listed at the lowest price that it's ever been. Anyway, long story short, this is a great product. If it was a hazmat, there's a great opportunity to get this product removed as a hazmat so you could send it directly to an Amazon fulfillment center. So what you're going to need to do here is it asks for the first piece of information is the ASIN. So we're going to pull the ASIN from this listing, and we are going to paste this ASIN in the ASIN category, and then or in the ASIN column, and then it asks for the product name. And now when it asks for the product name, it's not asking for what you think the product should be called. It's not asking for what the product's called on the package. It's not asking for what your distributor has it in their in their catalog, it's asking for the actual listing title on Amazon.com. So you just want to take this listing title, copy it, paste it in the product name, and then it asks in this column P, is your product sold with a magnet? Now this is an acne cream, so it definitely doesn't have a magnet. And as soon as I select no, it's going to actually dark out column Q for the magnet pull force because it doesn't have a magnet in it. And now it asks for the full ingredient list with percentages if available. So we need to find the ingredients for this product. And we're going to do that by doing a basic Google search. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just top, copy the description of this product. I don't need all this extra information, this maximum strength, benzoyl peroxide, acne medication, fights block pores, pimple size, excess oil, acne marks, and blackheads. That's not helpful for me. So I'm just going to take the first couple words that describe what the product is. I'm going to open up a new Google tab here, and I'm going to type in ingredients and then paste the keywords that I'm searching for and it looks like right here the first thing that pops up is not only the active ingredients but also the regular or the inactive ingredients so so what we're going to do is copy this information and we're going to paste it into the full ingredient list with percentages if available Right, so now it has the ingredients, it has the ASIN, it has the product name, it has if there's a magnet or not. And the last question it asks is, does your product contain compressed gas? The answer is no. So I want to take the ASIN because that's what I want to save it as. And then I'm going to go back to this file. And I like to save these files um, with the ASIN and a brief description of the product. Clear a sill. Was it stubborn acne control? I believe stubborn acne control. Stubborn acne control. All right, save that. And now the file is saved. Final step. We go to Amazon.com. Copy the ASIN, you go to Seller Central, 
and now it says how to upload your SDS or exemption sheet and what we just filled out was an exemption sheet and the last thing I'll show you is how to submit an actual SDS from the manufacturer if you can locate it so it says specify the ASIN marketplace and document language so that's referring to these first three options here so you want to paste the ASIN the marketplace you're selling on we are on amazon.com the language this is in English and then it says choose the file you want to upload the file must be 20 megabits or less click upload final file a banner at the top of the screen will say file successfully uploaded you can then close the window or upload more documents if necessary or speed steps one through three to upload more documents for the same ASIN or a different ASIN so this is done on an ASIN to ASIN basis so it's not like you just submit this documentation and for every single ASIN the three pack the six pack the one pack the 12 pack for this clear sill stubborn acne control they remove it from hazmat it's only for the specific ASIN so that's something to keep in mind and then you would just choose the file um, we'll go to recent files quick access and we would select this clear full clear sill stubborn acne control and then I would click upload file I'm not going to upload this file because I don't want to send Amazon a document that's not necessary because we got this product approved through this exemption sheet years ago and we've sold this product um, so I don't want to submit information that doesn't need to be submitted but those are the steps it's very basic and now the last option you have is let's say this doesn't work or you want to just go right to the source you can actually pull an SDS which is a safety data sheet directly from the manufacturer and how you do that is once again you are going to do a basic keyword search so I'm just over here on my other monitor copying the first couple words of this listing and now I'm just going to do a basic keyword search I'm going to type let's start with SDS and then I'm going to paste the description in there and let's see what populates so I'm just looking for an SDS sheet a um, bunch of Amazon listings Walmart Walgreens CVS nothing it would be on this first page maybe the second page I'm not even going to look anymore now let's change this to safety data sheet and see what pops up rbna info.com this looks promising let's check this out we'll open this in a new tab here we go what do we got we got the stubborn acne control five in one spot treatment it's one ounce I think this is a Procter and Gamble product if I'm not mistaken it looks like we could find if we look on this website there should be a safety data sheet and here they are so safety data sheets it's got English or Spanish so we would select the English and boom here's the safety data sheet direct from the manufacturer it actually should say the manufacturer in here You don't need to know the manufacturer. Um, I just like to learn about the products that I'm selling on Amazon. I think it's a Procter and Gamble product. Let's actually Google that real quick. Who makes clearer still? Procter and Gamble so I got it right here I just googled who makes clear sill and Procter and Gamble P&G and I just like to know this information if I'm already doing the research why not learn about the products that I'm selling I mean, it's important to know the companies that manufacture your products I think it is at least it can't hurt to know that information so here we got the PDF of the safety data sheet for this product we could do the same thing here 
we could save this product in our hazmat folder um, hazmat FBA hazmat's new folder we'd save it with the ASIN so let me grab this ASIN real quick before I save it three pack Go back here. Clearer sill. Stubborn acne. We're not saving it. LS, we're saving it. Uh, we'll just put PDF in here so I know. Save this file. Save as a PDF. And then I would go back to Amazon and paste the ASIN, choose the PDF file that I just saved, here it is, and then I would upload this file. And now Amazon has all the information necessary. So I just gave you two different ways to get a product removed from its classification as a hazmat. Now this will not only help you increase your sales, but it will help other sellers increase their sales as well because as soon as the product is no longer considered a hazmat for a specific ASIN, that means it removes it from that hazmat classification for all sellers. So it increases opportunity for you, it increases opportunity for your fellow Amazon sellers, it increases opportunity for us. So it's beneficial for people to submit these MSDS forms. It helps the Amazon seller community as a whole and anything we can do together as a team to make Amazon a more friendly atmosphere to make more money on, a more friendly marketplace to make more money on and line our pockets with money and our souls with happiness is beneficial to everybody. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any comments or questions, leave them below in the comments section. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and stay lit.